So a ton of people are really interested in this YouTube automation that I've made. One of my shorts actually got 164,000 views for this automation. And I've made a really optimized version, which you can see right here as well, following the best practices for N8N. And this is a perfect way to get inspiration to start pumping out some faceless videos as well. You know, which you can put on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as well, anywhere you want. And you will need a Google API key for this as well. So just search up Google Cloud Console in Google. Uh, go to the first result right here. You know, register an account, get logged in, everything like that as well. And then you're going to need to get an API key. Okay, so um, I won't go through the whole process of getting this in this particular video, but do get one of those keys because it will be required to actually run this as well. And then once you have that key, you just go into both of these HTTP requests right here. You jump in there and you scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the name, key, and the value. And this is where you would just add that API key in there and you should be good to go and just add it in for both of them as well. Okay, so you have uh, two, just two, that's it and you're set. And we'll also have to get a token for Airtable as well. Very, very easy to get. Uh, basically all you do, so you're going to be adding your credential, open docs, and we load up this page right here. And if we go down here, we can just click on personal access tokens, use these scopes right here, then you'll get the access token. Then you can just pop it straight in here, press save, and you'll be connected as well. And as for this actual table right here, I will provide it as a download as well. And you can just literally upload this CSV file you'll have everything as it is pretty much right here as well. How it all works is we do have the titles, obviously. We have the channel name. We have the video type. So you can see here I have, you know, this one is a short. This one down here is a medium length video. And this is your long videos, okay? Now, there sometimes will be videos which are, let's say, considered to be short, but they're not actually short. They might be like horizontal videos. And that's only because we can only detect videos by length. If we look over here as well, we do have the search term. So this is a search term that you are using to get this actual data here. So you can see on this one, I have AI agents. On this one here, I have Claude Code. This one's AI automation. And if we look over here too, we can see a performance. So this is like a calculation that I'm doing with just a simple code. And essentially, this is going to output, you know, different types of uh, statuses for the performance. So obviously, if it's dead, it means the video sucks. Um, but this might not always be the case because as you can see here, the likes are zero, but maybe something's wrong with their video, not entirely sure. In this one here, for instance, though, average, as you can see, not performing that great. But this one right here, holy hell, this is performing really, really well. Then on the right here, we do have the thumbnail, so we can just literally just click on that open that up and we get a thumbnail as well. Now that's not really that useful for shorts. And we can also just view the video straight away as well. And there you go. Now in terms of how to use it all, we're just gonna be clicking open chat at the bottom right here. And what we wanna do is give a query. So this query could be something that you would normally search on YouTube. This is something based on, you know, the videos that you wanna be getting from YouTube. So we could say in this case, um, we could just say literally like anime, and then at the end of our actual query, we say something like shorts. Now we can say shorts, or we could say medium, which will get like medium length videos, or we could also say long. So depending on the type of videos that you wanna get, add that keyword at the end, just shorts or medium or long, and it'll actually you know only get those types of videos. So all we have to do, let's just say anime shorts, send that off, and you'll see the actual parser here. So now we're getting the video IDs, getting the video data, and boom, we're straight onto Airtable. It's very, very quick. And you'll see it populating right here as well. And you can see on the right, we do have the search term as well. So I know it's a little bit annoying if it's like loading up, but uh, we'll just let that load for a sec anyway. And I'll show you how it kind of all works here. All right, so that one's all done. Now, if we look in the parser here, you can see that the query that I sent was anime shorts, which we can see right here, okay? That's from the chat input trigger before. Now, when that's going through the parser, which is just JavaScript code, it's just using a code node. It's very, very simple. And if you do want to make code, by the way, download my extension right here, which is NA10 boy. I built it for NA10. It can code, you can chat with it. You can see I have all these buttons here for generating code and 
It's very, very simple to use. But anyway, what you can see right here is that we're getting the um, clean input from the chat input. And essentially, what we're doing here is outputting either short, medium, or long. So on the, on the right here, sorry, we can see that I have the chat input, which is just anime. And then it's been trimmed so that the short is not also combined with our original query because our original query was anime shorts. But now we're just getting anime. And then as the keyword right here is short. So that actually outputs two items now. And the HTTP request here, this is just very, very simple. So all we want to get from this actual endpoint, and this is the endpoint right here, all we want to get are the video IDs. That's all we need. Now, once we have the video IDs, we want to extract them as well. So as you can see right here, we have a lot of data coming through and we don't need a lot of this data. All we need are the video IDs. So all I've done here is a simple little bit of JavaScript to then extract all the IDs which you can see on the right here. So now we have 50 items, you know, rather than getting all of this useless, um, these useless other things right here, we don't need all that. All we need are the video IDs. And now for the video data. So if we come in here, you'll see that I have a different endpoint now, okay? So it's not the previous endpoint because now we're actually getting that video ID, placing it in here, and then we're extracting the engagement metrics from those videos. So how are we doing that? Well. It's from the part right here, okay? It's a query parameter called part, and we have the value, and generally all we need really is just the snippet statistics, uh, and I think it was, yeah, just content details. And that will actually, as we can see here, the content details outputs this information. We have the title here as well. So this is now showing us all that information. Then we also get the channel title and whatnot, all that crap, obviously. And this is obviously, you know, the most important part, the statistics. So we can see right here, we have the view count, we have the like count. The favorite count is pretty much always zero. I'm not even sure why that's still in the API. And we also have the comment count here as well. Now, since we got that data now, now we again wanna extract that data from this mess right here, because we don't need every single piece of information here, okay? All we need are, well, this right here, I just need the channel title. I just need the title, view count, like count, comment count, uh, YouTube URL, and the thumbnail if they have it. Some of them do, some of them don't. And we can see right here that the actual YouTube URL, for example, is not available within the actual um, items here, okay? So how I'm actually creating that YouTube URL is I'm just putting the YouTube URL just as you would normally have it, which is just watch uh, question mark V equals, all right? Then we just put a dollar sign and the video item ID. So every time this outputs, um, you know, everything onto the right here, it's going to be utilizing that video ID from here, adding it in here, okay? And then outputting all of these. So now they all have unique um, YouTube URLs as well. And this is how we actually generate YouTube URLs just from a simple little video ID despite not even having the proper full URL. And then from here, we want to create some video performance, some calculations to determine how well these videos are also performing. Yeah, sure, we can just look at the views, we can look at the likes, but high views don't always necessarily mean that it's highly engaging. So we want to determine that with a simple little calculation here. So you can see with this constant right here, which I have the engagement rate, it's just a like plus comment count divided by view count times a thousand. Okay. That's literally it. Now this is then going to be a percentage between zero and hundred percent. And then based on that number, based on that performance, we then get different types of performance text. So if it's like 80 and above, it's going to be holy hell. Okay. Which is essentially 8% engagement rate that we have insane crushing it, you know, so on and so forth. Right. Um, and then these, you know, as you saw before, because there was one dead and that's only because, well, I think it's uh, actually a problem with the API. Not really sure. It could be the video. Maybe they turn off comments. They turn off likes or something like that. And it's actually not public information and therefore we can't see it. And the last one is really, really easy. So once we get all that data now, okay, we've already got it from the YouTube API. We're already extracting everything through code. We've already made some performance text and all these other little things, right? 
And now we want to put everything onto our database as well. Now, Google Sheets is a really good option as well, but in terms of the actual aesthetic, in terms of the interface, I prefer Airtable, but just be careful because, you know, they do have a trial and whatnot, but if you do exceed a certain number of rows, I think, you will have to pay as well. But generally, just for simple use cases, you should be absolutely fine. And if you do want to learn further and not get left behind in AI, because I tell you, it only takes a week to get left behind in AI, feel free to join the school community. But if I don't see you there, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.